Okay, what we have here today is a Pergear TH3 ball head that I purchased a few weeks ago at what I would consider a very budget-friendly price uh, from Amazon. So I first have to say that normally I don't buy high-end ball heads or tripods, and I usually don't buy budget-friendly uh, ball heads or tripods. I usually go kind of middle of the road because I want to keep budget in mind, but at the same time I want something that I can trust when I mount my cameras and my lenses to it. So with that said, the reason I went budget friendly is because I needed to purchase something that is never going to leave this room and it's for my vlogging camera, which is the EOS M3 that I'm currently recording this on right now. Now, when I'm recording in this room with the vlogging camera, it's either mounted to a tabletop tripod such as it is right now, or it's mounted to a light stand. It's small enough I don't even use a tripod. So with that said, I'm going to use this umbrella bracket uh, in place of a light stand because I need something in this video to show a quarter 20 and show it close up and that would be easier than trying to do it with a light stand now with that said i wanted something that i could mount the eos m3 2 and that i could you know take it on and off really quickly for removing battery and memory cards and that i would also be able to pivot with so i needed a ball head so let's take a look at this um you know it has your standard lock and it has your regular tension over here. Then you have the tightening uh, for the pivot. Uh, let's see, we have, it takes, looks to be a standard plate. And we're gonna talk about the plate later because this is not an actual review of this. What I don't like to call it reviews. I just like to talk about what it is I use that I bought and paid for and how I use it. And if I have questions about it or uh, other thoughts. So now with that said, it has, if you're in what you would consider landscape shooting mode, you have a bubble level there. And if you were to move it into portrait style, you have a bubble level again, right there. It's loose right now. It seems to move very nice and freely. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any catches. Everything s appears to be nice and smooth, not loose and shaky. Uh, I don't find anything on it that I would consider loose and shaky. Now, again, it's only two weeks old, so uh, things do change with time, but it seems to be, for all intent purposes, pretty good. This is your tension, and if you tighten that down pretty good, uh, you can still move it, but I I'm got some resistance there and then of course this is the lock and if you lock it down it's not going anywhere so everything seems to function well there and I'm going to loosen these back up but now here is the first question I have okay like a lot of ball heads it comes with the 3 8 hole and I need to mount it onto quarter 20 so therefore I have to put one of these little inserts up inside of there. So this then becomes the first kind of a dilemma, uh, sort of, and let's see if we can get the flashlight to play along with us here. And I don't know if you can see up in there, it's kind of hard, I'm gonna try to get the camera to see, but it appears the hole is further up in than it needs to actually be. Like it's you know deeper than it needs to be. I'm gonna demonstrate it by putting this screwdriver in here. And if I put the screwdriver in, put my finger on it, pull it out, you can kind of see the depth that we're working with there. And if we look at the threaded insert, you can see that you certainly have uh, a lot of extra depth. So now with that said, I'm going to take an insert and I'm going to do this in real time because I just wanted to show and it, and it won't take long, but I just wanted to show this in real time. If I thread this up in there and there I'm threading it to the point where I've hit resistance, snug it a little bit. And now I'm going to take 
Now, remember, this would be my light stand, and I'm going to thread this up in there. And it pretty much has hit the tight. Now, watch this. I'm going to turn this loosening, loosening it. That is one complete turn. And now as we go into the second turn, right there at two turns. So two turns is all you get. That means just two of these threads are holding this thing on and you've got your camera and maybe a big lens mounted to it. So for me here in the studio, not a big deal, but still I wanted to make sure that, you know, it's going to be locked down. So I took a second threaded insert and I put that in there. But now when I put the second one in, I can only get it to go up so far. And now you can kind of see a dilemma here. It sticks out. So if I were mounting this on an actual tripod and not a light stand, I wouldn't be able to mount it flush. And you can kind of see. So now I have more turns and I'm locking down, but it's just, I don't know. That's a question, but for me, not a problem. You know, I can lock that down and on a light stand, I can even put one of these spinners on and really tighten it down that way. So that was, that was that question. And of course, when I took it off, the threaded insert wants to come out with it and leaving the other one still in there. So now the next thing I wanted to look at was the plate. And if we look at the plate, it mounts on there really good. And there's no question about that mounting on there. But if you plan on using other plates with it, you might run into combat compatibility problems, such as this uh, QR10 that I have right here. This QR10 plate is, seems to be a pretty standard plate. Uh, I have bigger ones. I have QR20s and different sizes, but this QR10, the problem I run into, and I'm going to show it right here, that is these, these screws, if you can see them, the little set screws right there, they make the plate sit up higher. And as I clamp on, you can kind of see it's uneven. It's not, and I'm going to Put the light on it so that it can actually really be seen good. Uh, it's definitely not getting a good bite there. And I dare again, that would be a trust issue. Uh, if that's going to come off of there, I don't know. So I, I don't know why that is. I guess the reason is that these screws set up higher than this is the plate that came with the per gear. And the other thing to notice is how the, the groove is made. This one is not as even. This is again, my standard plate that I have lots of these. And this one is maybe bring it back and maybe put some light on that. And you can kind of see it just is thicker on one side than the other. Anyway, that is my thoughts on this per gear TH3 ball head. I certainly will use it and probably will not have any problems with it. I just wanted to point out for $23, this is what you get.